How you doing folks? Well, I'm going to continue on with the bodywork of the MG and that includes restoring the front bumper and getting all the steel work sorted out with it. So, let's get stuck in. <laughs> now I know the first question people are going to be asking is, oh God, please tell me he's going to be doing a chrome bumper conversion on this car. No, I'm not actually. Um, I actually like the rubber bumpers, I think they look kind of nice. Um, that's not to say I don't like chrome bumpers, but I like the rubber ones as well. Um, the chrome bumper car and rubber bumper car are two very different looking cars. And mine is a rubber bumper car and it's going to stay that way. And plus, I want to keep this car completely original. So um, that means not changing the bumpers. But uh, what we have to do is we have to actually sort out the steel work on them. And um, now the seal work, it, the, the bumpers weigh a ton. I mean, I'm actually amazed at how heavy they are, to be honest with you. But um, there's a lot of steel inside uh, inside the bumper and that's all rusty. It's going to need to be cleaned and painted. And um, yeah, so there's a bit of work involved in that. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we need to remove these rivets along the top and bottom of the bumper. And that essentially uh, will allow the steel work to come off. Thanks to the guys to, in MG Experience for giving me the information on uh, how to actually separate the steel from the bumper. And looking at it, I probably would have figured it out myself, but sometimes you're better off just asking the question and somebody who actually has already done it and knows and knows the pitfalls will actually give you that information. So thanks guys, I appreciate that. So um, yeah, uh, a bit of, bit of work involved in this. So um, yeah, we'll keep going. The number plate brackets are gonna to need to be removed first. Of course, I left my uh, Imperial socket set up with the um, with the car, so we're going to have to manage. I think a bit of heat on these might not go amiss. Oh, well, that's broke. That's another bit of hardship we can sort out at a later stage. Ah! <laughs> Merge me! There we go. Right, okay, so that's that. So uh, we can worry about um, drilling out that broken bolt in a little while. Uh, there's going to be a few other broken bolts that need to be taken out as well. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking out all those rivets and um, I need to buy some more rivets, but that's not the biggest problem in the world. Um, and then hopefully the rubber will separate easily from the, from the bumper. Let the games commence. There's one strip out, that's the uh, bottom one. So the top one could be a little bit more tricky because of access, but I'll show you now how we're gonna get around that. First thing, I'm gonna just take off this uh, bar that goes along the top. It, it needs to come off anyway because of the fact that um, I want to paint it separately and uh, be able to get in behind it and all that. You know, there's no point in doing a half-ass job on this. Kind of just clipped in along the top here. There we go. That's that off now as well. So it's really going to be just a case of actually bending the rubber back like that to try and get in at the uh, the rivet heads. As I said, it's a bit a bit more difficult, but what you need to do is just make sure you don't damage the uh, bumper with the drill bit. So I'm going to actually get that pry bar in there and keep it away from the drill. Box. <laughs> it's not the most balanced thing in the world. <laughs> There we go. 
that's the two strips off that I hold the uh, hold the bumper in place now. The steel part, I mean. Okay, so the strips are off now, but the problem we still have is the fact that the actual uh, the shanks of the rivet are still sticking through. So what we now need to do is we need to actually try and pry the rubber up off the steel. I'm hoping the frame of this bumper isn't like Swiss cheese underneath. So yeah, so the trick here is seeing we need to have two implements just to sort of walk along with them. These are coming off now. Okay, so I have the uh, have the rubber pulled up off all the rivets now. So now it's literally should be just a case of yes. Hey. Oh, some structure. So obviously this is the inside of the uh, rubber part. You've got all of this. These uh, ribs, it's ribbed for your pleasure. And uh, yeah, um, quite a bit of a uh, quite a bit of rubber there anyway. And this is the steel support that goes in behind it. So um, well, I mean, the positive thing there is it's not rotten, which is nice. So uh, literally just a case of grinding that back, painting it up, and putting it back together again. All right, I'm just going to clear the decks here a little bit. Not much weight in the rubber part on its own. It's not too bad, but that is some lump of pig iron, lads. I'm not joking. Gee ow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> they weren't messing around when they made this anyway. Right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to grind off the rest of the rivets and um, then we can uh, uh, start about uh, cleaning everything up and getting it ready for painting. Do you think I can find a punch or a drift or anything like that in my bloody garage? I know the place is upside down. I usually know where stuff is, though, but God almighty. You know what's going to happen is I'm going to end up using a nail. If it works, is it really wrong? Right then, one down, two to go. All of these fasteners or studs or anything are going to be replaced, so this one is going to come out as well. This one, uh, it, the nut came off and it wasn't actually seized so much, but I'm going to get some heat onto it anyway, first of all. One thing I do need to invest in is a set of Imperial taps and dies because I actually don't have a set. So, uh, t t for doing things like cleaning out, cleaning out the holes and stuff like that, it's a uh, it's one thing I'm lacking. All right, so that's that. Um, last one is a little bolt for the number plate, and I have a funny feeling the only solution for that will be a um, a drill. But we'll give it a go. Okay, folks, we're making progress now. So I have all of the fasteners out, have the rivets off. I've got the, obviously, the metal part separated from the rubber part of the bumper. So uh, now really it's a case of getting into the cleaning and painting side of things. So what I need to figure out first of all is how I'm going to clean the inside of it. Because if you listen, not ideal. The whole inside is full of crap. So that all needs to be cleaned out. But access isn't exactly ideal, so uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to go about doing that. I, I suppose the thing, is, the thing about it is, is that I can only do so much, and once I kind of got it to that point, then it's just really a case of making like a thin mixture of uh, paint or something like that, and just swishing it around inside it to kind of get everything coated in there. Um, I have that. Uh, actually, I suppose I could do it with shuts. That might that might work. Before I use the shorts, I'll, uh, I'll I'll swish around some hydrate eighty in there as well, and uh, get uh, 
get it all kind of coated that way and um look it's a it's a big heavy lump of steel it, it, it'll be a long time before uh, before that rusts through it'll rust uh, it'll be the rest of the car will rust sooner than that will but um that being said i, I also wanted to to look right too so um yeah a bit of bit of cleaning involved here now and uh, i'll grind back any kind of um surface rust and that get it all squared away and then we can um we can kind of go from there um once i kind of have all of the, the flaky stuff that's inside is sort of freed up and and that i can try and i can kind of try and get it down to one end use the blow gun and then hoover it out and whatever and i'm kind of thinking aloud here he's making it out he goes and no 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 I went and got myself a little friend, a quarter inch die grinder that's running off the compressor that you can hear in the background. It was seven quid on Wish. I mean, if it broke tomorrow, it's still a bargain. You cannot argue with that. Time to break out the old uh, seven euro die grinder, see how it gets on. These are Rolock discs, by the way. I find them very handy. I actually bought a box of them ages ago. I just never, uh, never really got around to using them. <laughs> Ah yeah, that is the job. This is the other piece of gear I have. It's a uh, knotted wire wheel for my grinder. So let's try that out as well. I haven't tried this either. I'd say this will do the job really well. Quicker and quieter. Derek from Vice Grip Garage calls these cheek pokers. I can kind of see why, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's one of my favourite channels on YouTube, by the way. That guy is just brilliant. That's the business. Really happy with that now. So I, I'd be pretty much happy enough to just paint over that at this stage. I will be giving it a coat of um, uh, uh, shuts as well as everything else, you know, just to give it a little bit of extra kind of stone chip protection and all that and uh, the shut is slightly mottled like it doesn't go on smooth so it won't really matter that um that this isn't exactly perfectly smooth now, the next thing we need to do as i said is to try and figure out how to clean out the inside of it I and mean, just just rust flakes and everything coming out of there like so i suppose first thing i could do is take it outside and blow it out with the airline I think the solution is some form of cavity wax or something along those lines that comes in an aerosol. I can go in through all of the rivet holes right the way along and uh, spray it all in um, and just basically uh, leave that to set inside and just paint the outside. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a think about it anyway and uh, I'll, I'll pick this up another day. I'm, uh, but through the miracle of editing, you'll never know. Okay, so it's a couple of days later and I am stuck back into the bumper now trying to get things finished and um, I have the inside of it protected now so I'm going to show you what I did. It's a little unconventional. Well, there it is there and there's an oil catch pan so that should give you a clue. Used engine oil mixed with wax oil poured down the inside of it. I heated up the wax oil a little bit in a saucepan of hot water and um, just basically got it in a container just poured it in there and just swished it around so there's no way that's going to rust from the inside anyway. I now have to try and clean the outside before I paint it. So um, I'm going to just let uh, let a lot of the oil kind of run out of it, and then um, I'll uh, I'll wipe it down, and we'll be able to give it a couple of coats of paint then. But um, we obviously have to do a bit of waiting. So in the meantime, there's a few uh, bits and pieces that I can be kind of wire brushing to get them ready for paint as well. So while that's kind of drip drying, I can take care of these, which is the um, the front grill and the, the kind of the lower front valance. And there's also the uh, the strips, uh, the the doubler plates to go on the top and bottom of the rubber of the bumper. They um, I've already uh, tidied them up as you can see here. So um, they've just been wire wheeled now. I haven't painted them or anything. And obviously one of them has a kink in it, so it needs to be straightened out as well. And then there there are the bumper outriggers as well, which uh, also need to be cleaned and painted. Okay, so there's a nice uh, film of oil inside that uh, bumper uh, support uh, piece that um, should stop it from uh, rotting from the inside out now. So uh, that, uh, that worked out really well. And uh, from all the grinding, there's a nice uh, thin film of dust all over my garage, but 
Now, some other day is worth trying to sort that out. In fairness, if I'm going to be building the car's engine in here, I'm going to have to clean the garage because we can't have uh, grinding dust all over the place if we're trying to build an engine that's intended to last for a few miles. Okay, so I've wiped everything down with uh, uh, petrol and then a bit of brake cleaner and that's taken off the film of oil from the outside and uh, it's, uh, it's clean enough to give it a coat of the uh, built Hamber Hydrate 80 that I uh, use to protect against corrosion. So um, I find this stuff really good. Um, I'm not sponsored by them in any way, much as I would like to be. That might be something I can look at in the future. But uh, for the moment, anyway, I, I'm just recommending the products that I use. Um, I'll give it a coat of that, and then I'll give it a coat of two-pack black epoxy, which I will brush on. And then we can, once everything is dry, then we can set about reassembling the bumper. Um, obviously, I need to clean the plastic parts as well. Okay, so here's the stuff I'm going to use. Give it a good shake first of all. I have to put it in a non-plastic container, so I'm using the lid of a spray can here, which will do the job nicely. Oh, I had this problem the last time, trying to open the bloody thing. That's the only problem. I'll come back to you in a second. I ended up having to use an oil filter wrench to open it. Not ideal, but anyway. So, pour some out into, the, into this lid. A little goes a long way. You really don't need to use much of this stuff. I'd say the little bit I put out put out into that uh, that lid will actually cover the whole of this bumper and all the other bits that I have. Um, what I like to do as well is I like to just buy cheap paintbrushes that I just throw out after I'm finished. Now, it's kind of it doesn't really bond well to the existing paintwork, but. That's all right, in fairness, the paint that's there is going to stop anything from uh, rusting. What it'll do though is it'll turn the um, any metal it comes in contact with black. And that means it's worked. I think it might be a case where I just didn't degrease this well enough, you know that? I thought I did, but... Look, we'll brush it on anyway, and give it a couple of coats and hopefully it'll do its job. Yeah, see there's no oil on this, so it's going on better. That's the way it really should go on. So, we may have to revisit that situation with the bumper, uh, the main kind of support for it at some stage. When you start in on a job like this, it quickly becomes apparent how long it's actually going to take you because of the fact that like, every little job takes ages. Just doing this front bumper has taken me well, the guts of a, a full day, really, you know, I mean, if you're going to do it properly, it, that's the kind of the time you're into. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you here. If you look along this um, uh, bumper support now, you can see that the, the Hydrate 80 is actually drying nicely. And then if you have a look at the outriggers here, there is, um, you can still see it kind of, it's purpley and then it'll eventually go uh, pretty much completely black and then it's dry and then you can overcoat it. Uh, but what I will do is I will give it a coat of the um, uh, two pack epoxy off camera anyway. And then when that's done, I will bring it back and then we can have a look at the uh, final result and you can, uh, you can see how it's looking. And then we'll start putting the bumper back together because by then the paint will be dry. All right, so we're back at it today. It's another day now, and uh, this uh, bumper is uh, definitely taking a good bit of time to get it 100% uh, right. But when you're starting to get into kind of cleaning and painting, you know, you're investing a bit of time because you obviously have to let paint dry and you have to prepare things and you have to clean things and all that sort of stuff as well. So uh, have a look now at how the bumper itself came out. You can see here now, for example, I've scrubbed it all down. It's not perfect. I mean, to be honest with you, I won't try and get it any better until it's actually fitted to the car but any kind of um, loose dirt or anything like that has been washed off it. I gave it a good uh, scrub and I rubbed down a few little uh, imperfections with some 400 grit just to kind of get it looking uh, reasonably smart. 
Um, and when you look here now at the actual support, you can see it's in a coat of black two pack epoxy paint and that's a uh, look at the job now as well. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with how things are coming along and we're at the point now where we can actually start putting it back together again, which is what we'll be doing today. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. Okay, so this is obviously the bumper laid out here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install the main support section. And uh, what we're going to use is I bought some five by 19 mil rivets, uh, which will do the job nicely for holding it on. Now they're aluminium rivets, so there's a question there about galvanic corrosion, but everything is painted that should be painted, so it should be all right. And plus the rubber shouldn't allow, some, uh, allow for ingress or should prevent ingress of water, I should say. I bought them in Halfords, that does not mean I'm sponsored by them, but they were the ones who had them available, so that'll do absolutely fine and they weren't too expensive. Okay, so obviously we need to make sure that we get it the right way around. Oh, God, it's heavy. Um, so, the number plate bolt holes will go towards the bottom. And the bolt holes, or the derivative holes for the support that goes around the top part will go towards the top. Sounds pretty straightforward. That's because it is straightforward. But you just have to make sure you get it right. So, right, so that's it, just laid in position, basically. So we're just going to move it so that the holes line up. And that hopefully will do the trick. Um, and now, next thing what I'll do is I'll just get a podger and I'll just uh, line up uh, line up the holes. And um, do you know what podger I'm gonna use? That's right, folks. The nail comes back out again. Because it's still on my bench and it'll do absolutely fine. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our doubler on here, first of all, on the bottom. And then we can wor worry about the top because the top will be a little bit trickier and I'll show you the reason why now in a minute. So I have my two doublers up here. I don't know if they are a mirror image of each other or not, but I suppose we'll find out soon enough. Well, the holes all line up. Now you want the curved, uh, the curved part facing out, not facing in, because uh, basically you don't want it digging into the rubber. So, to take off the, uh, the little piece of cord I had, just tying it in place. Ah, there go all the rivets on the floor, marvellous. Okay, so, as I said, these are five by 19 mil rivets. I don't know if they're exactly the right size to be using for this job, but if they fit, they'll do fine. Right, so what we do as well. we'll get our nail halfway down just to get the uh, alignment roughly correct. So I'll just put that in the hole. And I want to put a rivet on the front, the, the first and the last. Okay, so there's one in at that end. So I could actually drive that rivet there now, which I think I will actually, to be honest with you. And at least that keeps that in place. And then we can worry about the rest and we'll get one at the other end and then we can we can go from there. Um, at least I, I think that's probably the best course of action. Let's just see if I can get this, this one in here, first of all. Yeah, that one's gone in as well there. Okay, right. So yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll actually get the rivets into a few, get get all the rivets in and then drive them. Okay, right, so that's all of them in. So don't worry, I bought two packs of them. So let's see now, we can get our rivet, rivet gun on. Okay, so there's number one done. I don't know if it's the rivet gun or the rivets themselves, but sometimes the little shaft in the middle drops down inside and uh, it can be fiddly to stop from dropping down inside the bumper. Now 
It's just a crap rivet. Okay, so I have the rivets all driven now in the bottom of the bumper, as you can see along here. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a faff. I think it's because the rivets themselves are just not great. And what ends up happening is the first squeeze you give them, it just seems to sort of break away the little ball from the, uh, the, uh, the grip of the outer part. And uh, it just drops down rather than uh, pulling up inside the rivet. So you have to kind of try and get a pliers and just pull it up again after the first pull of the rivet gun. And then uh, afterwards, then it'll work. It's just, it's a bit of a faff, but it worked in the end. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over now and start doing the top. So the reason I was saying these ones can be tricky is because of the fact that you have to try and get them in there. So uh, yeah, it is gonna be tricky actually, but you look at it. It's not gonna be the trickiest job I have to do on this car in the first instance. So we'll persevere and we'll get there. So we need a doubler plate first of all. So that goes in here. And I think rather than trying to get them all into position, I think I might just try and do two in the middle and a couple at the ends. All right, uh, you'll have to excuse the noise of uh, dogs going batshit in the background. It's day-to-day -day life in this kip. Anyway, that's just, yeah, people don't seem to understand the fact that we don't want to listen to their dogs. Anyway, right, it ran over. Um, I have all the rivets driven on the top and bottom uh, doubler plates, so I'll just uh, show you here now. Um, a couple of them, uh, the stems kind of broke halfway along when I, uh, when I, when I squeezed them, but look, they'll be all right in fairness. It's not like it's a kind of um like there's plenty of them there they're not going to go anywhere so uh yeah all right so this is the next piece to fit here which is the bit that goes up along the top and kind of gives it a little bit of rigidity so um we'll just uh, make sure that the holes are cleared out for those because it's four holes and this this was riveted on as well so uh this should be a nice handy one to rivet on so uh, we'll just get it roughly into position and they, it literally it clicks on all the way along the top here. So I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. And I'll get, uh, get it onto its front. And oh god there's some weight in this now. I can see why some people like to modify the, uh, or to remove the bumpers altogether if they're talking about performance of the car. But my, my quest on this car has always been to keep it stock, not to modify it in any way. So uh, that basically means it's keeping its rubber bumpers and as I said earlier on in this video I actually like them myself so they're staying all right so we have the top support in place so we can literally go along and click that all onto position there which is nice and uh, there's just a couple of little areas where I want to just touch up the paint. I'm actually just going to use a little bit of spray paint just to take the rough look off. I mean, the, the Hydrate 80 is all still on it and everything. And then the last thing I'm going to do before, uh, before I call this uh, finished is I'm going to tap the holes for any bolts going through. Okay, so I bought some uh, Imperial taps. So I have quarter 5, 16, 3, 8, 7, 16. So um, that's not something I would have normally had knocking around the garage. So these four... Or sorry, these two uh, over here are the ones for the number plate. So we just want to clear them out. And go nice and easy. And I have new bolts for them and everything. There we go. See, you shouldn't have to gunter the thing into it like you know I mean it's literally just clearing out any rust or paint or anything like that so uh, we'll, we'll do the uh, bolts here and here and then there's two uh, there's uh, these ones here and then there's uh, some more over uh, over to the other side which I'll show you now in a second
as I said, there were studs going in here before, so just literally cut the head off a bolt. We get a. I'll get a couple of nuts locked onto that there now in a little while and wind them in. But for the moment, anyway, that uh, four of those lads will do the trick nicely, and then our uh, outriggers bolt onto there. So uh, we have our studs in place. And we put our number plate bracket back on, our number plate on, and then that's the job done. Okay, so you can see I've tapped out the holes for the number plate brackets as well. The one thing I did have to do though is I actually had to drill them up to the next size because well, that one was uh, bunched. I was not going to get a bolt into that. So once I drilled it up to the next size, I, I, I did it on both of them because there's no point in having two different size bolts. Um, we can put a 516 bolt in there now, so uh, that uh, solves that problem. And you can see uh, the studs are in place there now, and those holes over there are tapped out as well for the outriggers. So um, we're we're looking pretty good here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt on that number those number plate brackets, but I'm going to stop short of putting on the number plate uh, itself because it's just going to get damaged getting kicked around the garage. So obviously I had to drill the holes out one size bigger on the uh, number plate brackets as well. Ste uh, metric step drill. In fairness, it's only a clearance hole. So. And to shorten the bolt. There we go, they're going in now. You know what? Before I do anything else, I'm actually going to put a bit of grease on those bolts because they are going to rust solid in place if I don't do that. So, uh, yeah, we'll do that now actually. with how that turned out actually I have to say um, it took a bit of time but you know it's such a feature of the later MGBs that uh, not spending the time on that would be crazy you know I mean taking it apart painting everything up and getting it all right means that the car is just going to look that bit better so uh, I'm going to leave it there folks so thanks very much for watching and please do uh, hit the subscribe button it doesn't cost you anything and you'll be able to keep updated with my progress on this car and my other projects as well so thanks for watching chat to you soon